A few years ago, I uploaded a series of Walking Dead Season 2 cut content videos. I showed nearly everything that there was still left over in the game. But despite little pieces here and there, there just wasn't a clear explanation for what exactly Season 2's original story was. I speculated a bit on what I thought the original story was going to be, and that I sort of hinted at the idea that Season 2 was supposed to be a much darker story than it ended up being. Since then, I've come to understand a lot more about the development of Season 2. Around the time I learned this, I thought about making a video on it, but it was suggested that I don't for the simple reason of it being secret, and not something I was supposed to know. And I sort of agreed with that. But I think enough time has passed, and I believe this information is just too interesting to be lost in the sands of time forever. So long as I don't mention who or how, I don't think it's too big of a deal for me to talk about. That also means I can't provide evidence for obvious reasons. So really, it's up to you whether or not you want to believe me. I could defend myself, but honestly, I think my track record on this channel speaks for itself. I'm not the type of person to lie about things for attention. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to believe what you want. In writing the script for this video, it also made me realise that I should clear up what I mean by the original story. When I talk about the original story, I'm referring to the very first ideas that came about when Season 2 was in early development. That is what I'm going to talk about in this video. What you might not understand is that Season 2 went through a ridiculous couple of story cycles and rewrites. Obviously there are smaller changes in between, but as far as major revisions go, there's roughly three. Here's a visual to explain what I mean. So here we have the original story. Script 1, or the OG script. These are some of the very first original ideas and mock-ups for what the season's story was roughly going to be. That is what I'll be discussing in this video. Back in 2013, Sean Vanneman and Jake Rodkin, two of the main people behind the first season of The Walking Dead, left Telltale to go found their own company, Campo Santo. Before leaving, they left behind a set of notes of how they were generally going to have season 2 play out. While we don't know exactly what they left behind, what is known is that they did a considerable amount of work on the first episode of Season 2, before they left. As far as the OG script is concerned, it's important to know that it was only ever an early draft, if you could even consider it that. It doesn't mean the things I'm going to tell you about later in the video were 100% going to happen. Things could have changed as the game continued. All I can tell you is what was initially planned. The next script I'm not going to call the second script. I'm not sure if I can even count this one, but I think it's important enough to be mentioned. Instead what I'll call it is the Brunner script. I call it the Brunner script because from the story I was told, once the original team who wrote the first script left Telltale, the Telltale management reportedly discarded the ideas of the first script and attempted to write their own version of Season 2, thinking they could do better without the need of the original team. Clementine's most famous line, Still Not Bitten, was present in the very first script of the story. But guess what? The people behind the Brunner script actually wanted this line removed, and the newer writers had to fight for it. This was something I was told years ago, that was later confirmed in the commentary track for the definitive edition of Season 2. Um, <clears throat> and weirdly, the, the still not bitten line from Episode 1 was on the chopping block. What? Yeah. Many oh, times. That, we had to keep fighting to keep it in. Oh my god. Because it was just seen as like, no, 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 she'll get there in Episode and 5. And it fight? was like, no, you gotta like, yeah, that, that was a big one. Where the idea was show just a flash of what she will become someone. Right. Someday, yeah. you know. Still not bitten. Yeah. The reason I mention this is because that's the level of pettiness that the executives at Telltale were at. They thought that they could do better, and the reason season one was as big as it was had nothing to do with the talent of Vanneman, Rodkin, and the other Telltale members who worked on season one. But instead, that it was actually Telltale the company 
that made it the success it was. Anyway, from what I was told, the Brunner script was apparently so terrible that they decided to just go back to script one. It's not entirely known what this script was or what made it so bad, just that it was awful enough for them to go back to the original ideas. And that's all I know about the Brunner script. I call the second script the Dark Story script. Here's the thing. I don't actually know just how much overlap there was with both the Brunner script and this script. It's possible both this and the Brunner script were one and the same, but I'm not entirely certain. So because I can't know for sure, I'm just going to call it the Dark script, as I can't categorise it as being part of the final game. Things like the cut fishing scene from episode 1, the bear attack during the snow in episode 3, the town from episode 4, and of course, the recent cut ending from episode 5 that was revealed during the Definitive Edition commentary. These types of rewrites and changes are enough for me to have this be its own thing. The third and final script is, well, the final game and the story that we all know. Unfortunately, the content I showed off in my previous videos is from this second dark story script, which we sadly still don't know that much about. What the motive was for the changes are still unknown, even to me. Market testing? Management meddling? It's not certain. Sadly, we'll probably never know exactly what they were going for with that script. Just think, there's a bunch of hard drives out there with all of this information stored in them. Cut storylines, dialogue, models, maps, and they'll be stuck in someone's attic until World War III. Perhaps the real dark story of Season 2 is the timeline we live in. Now that you understand all that, let's actually get to the point of the video. The original story. The original story of Season 2 was about two key characters. Of course, one of them is Clementine. The story consisted of her journey in trying to get over the feelings of guilt from what happened to Lee, seeing herself as responsible for his death. She'd be trying to deal with the harsh realities of the world, while making the transition into being sort of a badass, but a more painful version of it. The other character who the story was supposed to centre around was Krista. It was about her trying to get over the grief of what happened to Omid and losing her baby, but now acting as a surrogate mother to a child that she never asked for. And unlike in the final version of the game, Krista was one of the characters who would make it to the finale. The story would begin immediately with the campfire scene, just like it is in episode 1. Just a hard cut right to it. No flashback. I mentioned it in a previous video, but the Omid flashback was indeed supposed to happen in the second episode. Originally, the first scene of episode 2 would begin with Clementine reliving the horror of what happened to Lee, before Lee would appear in front of Clementine. She'd be hiding in the red car you see in the epilogue of the first game. Her dream would break away after Omid taps on the glass, and from there we would see a bit more of Omid, Krista, and Clem as they were before Omid is killed. It's not exactly clear if the circumstances of Omid's death were exactly the same. All I know is that he got shot. By now, it would probably not shock you to find out that the very first script and the very first episode in the final game of Season 2 were almost entirely the same. Obviously, it's not 100% accurate because there's been many changes made to Episode 1, as you saw in my previous videos, but the big story beats are all the same. Omid is dead, Krista loses her baby and gets separated from Clementine, Clementine gets bit by a dog, gets locked up in a shed, and so on and so on. You can tell this just based on the quality of the writing and even the gameplay, at least up until the campsite scene, that this was obviously written by people who understood Clementine as a character, something that, as the season went on, started to fade away. Essentially, there was a whole road trip styled story that was going to play out basically the same as it does already, 
with the characters travelling from place to place. Albeit this time with a surviving cast of characters, instead of just the one or two that make it in the final game. Do you remember in a previous video when Kevin Bruner revealed in an interview with Game Informer that in an early draft, Clementine would have ended up at a zoo and that a tiger was involved? There was also mention of a nuclear reactor or power plant or something at some point, but I've got absolutely zero clue about any of that. Before everything got finalized for Season 2's story, Telltale was actually kicking around two major set pieces. A nuclear power station and a marauding tiger. For the tiger thing, they planned to have a scene where Clementine's group would happen upon a city during winter. And slowly but surely, characters would end up being taken out one by one. With the survivors thinking that there was some kind of super zombie killing everyone. Eventually, the reveal would be that it was actually a tiger the whole time that had escaped when the infrastructure for the zoo had fallen. As I said, this idea didn't make it far, and it was actually laughed at for how silly it was. And then the comics introduced Ezekiel not long after. Funny how things work out, huh? Anyway, as I said, it was essentially a road trip style story with a large cast of characters, sort of like how it is in the final game. Kenny was always intended to return. From what I was told, Kenny was still supposed to join your group, along with someone described as a new girlfriend. So it seems like Sarita, in some form, existed in this first script. This was later confirmed in an AMA with Gavin Hammond, who claimed that Sarita was always part of the plan. That might explain why she doesn't really have all that much to do or say in the final game. She's a holdover from an earlier version of the story. Her role might have been different in the older version, but I'm not sure. Kenny, however, despite making it near the end in the final game, apparently would have died at some point during this story. It's not really set in stone how or when he would have died, as they were still writing it as they were going along. Pure speculation here, but perhaps Sarita was supposed to go through her own arc after losing Kenny, and both Clementine and Sarita would be able to bond with both of them knowing him for some time. It would satisfy players who didn't like Kenny, but also for people who did by bringing him back, at least for a short while, and giving us someone to relate to after his passing. Seeing as I mention Kenny's death, I want to get it right out of the way that the Luke vs Kenny stuff is a remnant from the Dark Story or Brunner script. It was never a thing in script one. I should also mention that AJ was not in the first script either. It's interesting to think about how different the story would have evolved without AJ, seeing as he becomes a big part of the story in episodes 4 and 5. Season 3, and especially season 4, as we know it, wouldn't really exist without him. If Rebecca died before or after her pregnancy, or if she made it to the end along with everyone else, is unknown. Because again, these were rough ideas that weren't concrete and could have changed during development. Which brings us on to the finale. Our group, two of which were Clementine, obviously, and Krista, would finally make it to their destination. I like to think Sarita would have made it to the end too, given how they killed off Kenny, it would seem overkill to have his girlfriend die as well. Anyway. The survivors would end up at this community, which was probably an early version of Wellington, and each member of your crew would have an interview to see if they would be allowed in. I guess it would have been similar to that one episode of the TV show. However, this community was a bit different, as they operated on a kind of two-cast system. Given that Clementine is a child, the community wouldn't know what to do with her. She'd be given the choice to be part of the higher class, whereas her group would all be sent to the lower class, and would be treated really poorly. Clementine's choice would then tie into season 3, and depending on what you chose, the first episode of the next season would play out very differently. To be honest, I can't imagine that many people choosing to stay with a higher class. Why would you not want to stay with the people you know, even if it means your circumstances would be different? You can kind of see the similarity with the Wellington ending in the final game, with the choice of joining the community 
or leaving. Though there, it felt more impactful because you had a baby to look after. And so the circumstances were more than just yourself. I'm guessing the group would have all pushed for you to stay in the higher class, ensuring Clementine's safety and well-being. But I can honestly say, I don't think I would have chosen that. And that, everyone, is the end of what I know. I'm honestly pretty depressed that we never got that story with Krista surviving to the end. It feels like we were baited and switched for years with promises of returning characters, only for her to go missing for more than seven years. Season 2 appeared to be a more character-driven story like the first game, where the plot was secondary to the characters and their interactions, going from place to place with Clementine beginning to come into her own while on her journey. Perhaps Krista would come to love Clementine like her own daughter, the child that she never had. Is this story better than the one we got? Well, it seemed to have a more central focus, and in my opinion, the first episode of Season 2 is one of my favourite episodes of any Telltale game, mainly because we see a vulnerable Clementine, trying to keep herself together, learning how to survive with the advice she got from Lee. It's arguably her darkest moment, and the first time she acts entirely alone. On the other hand, it's hard to imagine how good the whole season would be and if that level of quality would have been the same. I suppose at the end of the day, it's not really important if it was better or not, because it's not the story we ended up with. But for me, it's always been something I've thought about. My hope was that one day somebody would datamine the games and it would all be revealed. Or maybe an ex-Telltale dev would just spill the beans completely and tell us how it was supposed to go. But that didn't happen. Around episode 3, something clicked with me. Something was off. Like, this doesn't feel right. That feeling only got stronger the next two episodes in, and it got me wondering what the hell was going on with this game's development. Why was Roman's corpse by the river, and what happened to Victor and his bandit friends? What was the point of teaching Sarah to use a gun if it never comes into play? Why does Nick stop existing after episode 2? What was the point of Rebecca picking up Carver's pistol? Which, by the way, he could have used to shoot Kenny. I could go on, but it's abundantly clear that, compared to the first season, this game didn't nearly have as much care put into it. From reading some of your comments over the years, it seems I'm not the only one that feels that loss. But maybe you're not one of those people. Maybe you're okay with S2 and ANF as they are. Maybe you're just curious as to what didn't make it. I do want to say though, Season 2 is not the worst game ever. I'd even say that I like it. It's my second favourite season after the first. It's like what Dennis Lenart said in the Definitive Edition commentary. There's a lot of good pieces in Season 2. It's just that not all of it came together. And looking at the things I thought was done well, it makes me appreciate what they were able to do with how little time they had to work on the game. Well, anyway, to me, this video is important. It's the reason I started making videos in the first place. To figure out exactly just what happened with this game's development. The answer is not exactly what I wanted, but it's the closest I'll ever get to it. Thank you all for watching, for nearly 8,000 subscribers, for supporting me, liking, commenting. It really means a lot, and it's pushed me to continue to make videos. That's all I have to say for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Peace.